More trouble for Georgia DA Fonnie Willis as whistleblowers are lining up to testify against her on allegations that the DA misused state and local funds. The Georgia Senate has formally begun investigating whether Willis is guilty of misconduct ever after a cavalcade of staffers testified to the misuse of funds in Willis's office. Now, Georgia Republicans repeatedly argued during the hearing announcing the investigation that this was not a political witch hunt, but rather designed to seek the truth. This comes as Willis continues to face criticism for her relationship with the special prosecutor assigned to handle the state's Trump election interference case, Nathan Wade. A new filing against Wade and Willis by Michael Roman, one of the defendants in the state's case, alleges that the DA lied about when she started her relationship with Wade. Willis has alleged that she and Wade began their relationship after Wade was hired as special prosecutor. The new filing alleges that, in fact, the relationship began before the hiring and that this should disqualify Willis and her team from the case. Hmm. Yeah, it's very bad. <laughs> I just don't understand why there is a commitment to the Democratic Party staying behind this. The interests are so much bigger than Fannie Willis. Who cares if she's yeah. someone—like, I understand that it takes time for people to catch up on the case. I understand that there is some um, kind of knowledge and experience lost there. But this case is so high profile that it's difficult for me to imagine that there aren't scores of lawyers that have, haven't been following this very closely, that there isn't a, a broad informal team that has been a part of this going throughout, and that Democrats don't have at their disposal the most gifted and talented and experienced lawyers in the entire country to call upon in this moment to step in. So why are we continuing to litigate? Why is the country's now attention taken from what we're being told is this democracy implicating case about the president allegedly trying to overturn right. the election results in 2020 into a smutty domestic dispute about whether or not a prosecutor started dating her boyfriend before or after a certain date. Yeah. In addition to the other things alleged by whistleblowers, including how sure. funds were allocated in her office, you know, someone uh, on, on uh, audio now, releasing audio footage and coming forward to say that she warned Fonnie Willis about funds being misspent, and Fonnie mm -hmm. Willis agreed and then fired her anyway. A um, lot going on here. Obviously, the, the Nathan Wade situation is alleged to be a kickback, that he was hired, and now they're saying they were already dating and that he was paid and then he took her on trips so it was kind of she's using the, the, the funds she was paying to his salary for her own benefit. Uh, this be, as you said, this being a very important case, the one, frankly, most likely to doom Donald Trump in the way that it was charged as a, almost as a RICO matter. Many of his associates also charged. They have incentive to, um, because what they're, because the prosecutors are really going after Trump, but the other charged people have incentive to cooperate, to say that they did it on Trump's behest, that he was involved in this conspiracy, so that they avoid charges. That's how it works. And also, these are state charges and not ones that right. um, Trump can can just, um, you know, snap his fingers and Thanos out of existence if he becomes president <laughs> again. So it's a very high stakes case, and they have found quite a cast of characters to be handling it, it seems. It, I, I would also say, I know this is perhaps a strained analogy, but there is now reporting, there is some pushback to the kind of summary firing of the UNRWA uh, employees that were fired after there was an allegation that they were involved in October 7th. Mm -hmm. And now there's some reporting about how, well, were they given due process? Did the UN even look into this before they just did it? And obviously the politics around that situation makes it touching. You kind of can understand why UNRWA would be like, fine, we'll get rid of these ones, just please don't cut off all of our aid. Mm -hmm. Even if from a due process perspective as an employee, that is very much less than ideal. But it does seem, it's, it strikes me as very odd that the urgency that UNRWA showed in saying, mm. fine, we'll just get rid of these employees, mm. isn't being shown by Democrats in this situation where the stakes are, you know, not life and limb. It's, it's, can we get a different prosecutor? Now, if, if, if what you're saying, if the argument is that what Republicans are alleging here is so unsubstantiated, is so unjustified, that it really is just a witch hunt, that it has, has no actual um, ethical violations at stake, well, then that's, that would be something. Then I would say, yeah. fine, stand by your girl. It doesn't but seem that like doesn't that's what they're saying. <laughs> what's going on here? I mean, I'm, I'm reading through the NBC did a did a, a, a an article about a week ago uh, titled "Lawyers and Ethics Experts Defend Fonnie Willis as Trump Seeks a Removal in the Georgia Case," and what what they're saying is things like, "We have no independent knowledge whether there was a personal relationship at the time of hiring." 
Uh, okay, well, okay. guess what? Republicans are going to find out. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're going to find that out soon yeah. enough. And it doesn't seem like there's a lot of transparency happening from the Willis camp, which I'm sorry. If she's frankly, wait, and she's acknowledged the relationship. I don't, what do you mean they mean? Well, it's, it's not the independently. Timing of it. is, is, is the timing is the uh -oh. argument now that we started dating after he was hired, we were working closely together, the relationship blossomed, and then the argument that it was a kind of a pay-for-play hiring mm -hmm. goes out the window, right? And they go on and they say paying for gifts for a romantic partner, partner out of one's income is normal in the context of a marriage or other romantic relationship. This is from um, the filing. Neither the relationship nor the alleged financial benefit to D.A. Willis justifies disqualification under Georgia law. I mean, maybe that's the case. Mm -hmm. May maybe that's the case. But it does, it does seem... I don't know, just like a completely unnecessary road for us to be going down. But there, this is on the heels of some pretty interesting news, obviously, out of last week in a related uh, Trump case that we wanted to get to. So last week in indictment news, we uh, found out that his um, the case to dismiss his case uh, on the basis of uh, immunity, broad immunity, was rejected by the federal appellate court. Um, but this week... Today, actually, we're likely to find out whether or not Donald Trump is going to appeal that immunity argument to the Supreme Court. Remember that last week, the federal appeals court unanimously rejected Trump's claim that he was immune from prosecution related to his election subversion charges. The trial was paused pending that ruling and will resume now unless Trump files an application today to extend the pause until the Supreme Court rules. Now, here's where things get rather interesting. Depending on what the Supreme Court decides to do with this case, the outcome be, could be that the trial is delayed until after the election day. If the court denies the petition seeking review, it would restart the trial. If it hears Trump's appeal on an expedited schedule, the results could still be known prior to election day. But if it decides the case on its regular review schedule, the trial would likely be delayed past election day, giving the Supreme Court an unusual mm. role in this political process. Mm. Now, after last week's decision, many folks looked at that and said the detail, the thoroughness of that decision, the fact that it was untitled but unanimous, that no one judge could be attributed to it. And then we start looking into their political background and coming up with ex explanations as to why it was politically motivated and should be ignored. And the fact that it was very thorough suggested that the appellate court intended for this to be the final say in this issue and hoped perhaps that it would not go to a Supreme Court review and that the Supreme Court would agree that this is a really political question. The appellate court did a good job in resolving this case. There seems to be a lot of unanimity among legal scholars that his really, really broad immunity claims just don't pass muster, and that could be the end of it. Right. But there is and this chance. Yeah. There is this chance that the Supreme <laughs> Court, given the political nature of these well, things, we just have to acknowledge, could say we are going to review it, and we're going to take our time to review it. And then what does that mean, given that um, there was a poll that was taken just last week that showed that around half of swing state voters say, they say they wouldn't vote for Donald Trump if he were convicted of a crime. Now, if you push the conviction until after, the, you know, the potential conviction until after election date, is the Supreme Court then putting its finger on the scale mm. and preventing those voters that might not otherwise have voted for Donald Trump from being able to make an informed decision? Yeah, I, I find it... Um very likely that they will eventually say that the, um, the the blanket immunity argument is no good, does not hold up constitutionally whatsoever. I, and frankly, I think everyone but the most like rankly partisan people have reached that conclusion. But you're right that a delay in it could uh, make a difference in terms of the election. Obviously, there was more Trump-related SCOTUS news last week as well. I believe they talked about it on Friday. But um, in case anyone missed it, um, the Supreme Court did hear arguments about the ballot disqualification issue where um, many of the justices seemed deeply skeptical. Mm -hmm. I think Elena Kagan said specifically, are you, you're arguing that, uh, that one state can disqualify someone from running for president, essentially. Other people ask, you know, what if this, now yeah. Republicans do this to Democrats, Democrats do this to Republicans. Um, a, lo a lot of questions, again, even from the liberal or Democratic appointed um, justices. It sound, you know, it's always hard to exactly anticipate, but based on what we heard, it seems exceedingly likely to me that um, the Colorado decision will be overturned, possibly by all or most of the Supreme Court. Yeah. And, and some political slash legal commentators are asking the question, well, 
does the, is the Supreme Court have the mindset where they think, well, we'll give one to this side and we'll yeah. give one to that side? Okay, we're going to say you can't strike Trump from the ballot, but we are going to um, uphold the, uh, the the appellate court's decision on this immunity. And others have said, well, that shouldn't be the way that it goes. Right. At the end of the day, you need to be deciding the law right. and not saying Although we're going to give one to you, be... give, give one to the others. But I, do think I, I happen merits, to think those would be the correct yeah, outcomes. I, but yeah. I, I agree as well. Yeah. All right, stick around. More Rising coming up next.